That should do it, buddy. Hey guys, I'm Dante, and welcome back to The Artist Eye. Today is going to be a two part episode. First part is going back to our original schedule of what is creativity and how can we become more creative and imaginative. And the second part is going to be tips and tricks to, well, how to improve your own artistic skills. Let's start with the creative section. In the first video we showed you, it was a look of how to view the world differently, how to find things that other people don't see, how to expand your mind past the normal. However, we do know that some people have trouble with that, so I'm going to show you how to find inspiration. And if we cannot find it, to create it. What I got right here is a simple piece of clay. So, here's a little exercise for you. Take a piece of clay or a piece of paper, whatever you got. Crumble the paper together, squeeze the clay together, work into it, twist it, turn it. What you're doing is trying to create a random shape of any type. Pull, twist, break apart, whatever you want to do. And then when you're done, you then take a look at it. You are now creating a random shape rather than going out into the world and trying to find one. And by creating it, you are now making, quite literally, your own inspiration. Look at it. What shapes do you see? Do you see a tail? Do you see a mouth? Do you see a dog, a cat, a ghost? Do you see an alien face? This is a nice trick to do because it allows you to twist things around. So if you find yourself wandering the streets saying to yourself, man I can't seem to find any inspiration. Not the trees, the birds, nothing helps. Go home and make your own inspiration. Just a little trick. In fact, let me show you right now something I came up with. I did this one day while at work. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you can use clay or you can use paper. Here's a little photograph I took at work. I took a piece of paper and just crumbled the heck out of it. Squeezed it around and when I let go, I realized, wow, this kind of looks like a gun. Then again, it could just be the masculine side of me talking. But, let me do a, a few sketches for you and you'll see exactly what I mean. So, take this trick, try it out. It might just help you. You don't know what you might come up with. Something amazing or something stupid, but hey, it's a nice practice. Definitely try it out if I was you. Next step, we're going to show you the tricks of how to color with markers. These are tricks I've learned over the years and they come in handy. Hey, thanks buddy. So, I'm going to show you a little trick I learned, several actually, that are ways to save yourself a headache when drawing in markers. First off, color values. You go to any store, you're going to see a huge rack of various colors. Let it be Prismacolor, let it be any kind of format. The issue is, the colors on the labels don't always match the color on the, on the actual uh, mold marker. So, if you're someone who knows the kind of paper they like to use, uh, whatever sketch pad, whatever kind of grade you use, one thing is good, whatever colors you have, take them and make your own color chart. This comes in handy, it's a great tool to go back to. All the colors I have are listed right here. I know how they look like on this particular type of paper. Because we all know different kind of papers can lead to different kind of different kinds of color hues. Now we got that set, let's talk about shading. You go to a store, you're gonna have every color in the rainbow. You're gonna have every shade of blue all the way down to the deepest, darkest, almost black color. You don't need all these colors. I know you go into a store, you might be a little nervous. You see all these different colors and it overwhelms you. Here's a nice trick. Personally, I go for a nice distance between the shades. For example, you go into a store and you're going to find Cool Gray number 30, 30. And it has 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up. 
I like to go for the in-betweens. Cool gray 30 and a cool gray 60. I don't need those in-betweens. These two is all I need to get the shades I want. We start off with a nice layer, full layer of the lighter color. Then on top of that, you add the darker color. It's just 3, 0, and 6, 0, 30 and 60. And there is a strong difference at first, but then that's why you take them and you blend them. You don't need to get the cool grade 40. You don't need to get cool grade 50. Soon, the blends work together perfectly. There's a nice jet black I have here. Add the jet black and use the lighter color into the darker color. So I'm going to use the cool, cool gray uh, 60 into the jet black and I'm going to blend it from there. Remember, this is a wet medium. So like watercolor, like paint, you know, let it, let it pour on. Let it blend naturally. And what you get is a nice gradation from one to the other without having to buy 50 different markers. Speaking of markers, here's a nice one. Cool blender. Oh, sorry. Sorry, uh, colorless blender. I do not use colorless blender to blend one color into the other. I like to use it to basically blend the lighter color into the background. It basically waters it down. It's good to do it when you first layer it on, though. It makes it nice and wet. Uh, regretfully, on the other side, there's a bit of a pink. So you have a bit of pink here. But you get the idea. Let's try with this one right here. Lay it down. And it blends your light color into the background. So you have a good way of saving money. You just have to find the colors you need. Not the colors they want to give you. Speaking of which. Here's a Prismacolor pencil. White. I like to use uh, gel pens, but regretfully I couldn't find my gel pen. But we'll use this for an example. So you have these colors and you realize, man, I want to do some highlights. Or I want to lighten a color for some reason. You can use a Prismacolor pencil, any color pencil, or like I said, a gel pen. And add the white right on top. You could do this to get some nice um, reflective effects. Let's say you color all in red. Oop, hit the camera there. Sorry about that, guys. Let's say you get red. Right? Let's say you're making blood. So you have dark red. Hit the camera again. Sorry. A little hint of black on the edge. Make it darker. And a nice spot of white. Which will lower it to a bit of a pinkish color because this is pencil rather than a gel pen. But still, you get that nice highlight on the edge of it. So yeah, if you're going to start off with the markers, remember, don't overwhelm yourself. Don't spend hundreds of dollars buying every marker. Find the shades that are in between. Find the colors you need. For my blues, I use these two different shades of blue. That's all I need to get that nice gradation. I want to do highlights, a pencil, or a gel pen. These tricks uh, save you headaches, they save you money, and it's just one of the main things I've learned over the years of drawing. I'm sure plenty of you out there have other ideas, so if you have any suggestions, post them up. I'd love to demonstrate them on my website, and that'll be it. Thanks for joining me, and um, we'll see you guys next time.